Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as now I want to look ahead to the upcoming season and look at some predictions for regular season awards. We're going to be running through of all of the individual player awards for this upcoming season and talking about who the key candidates are and ultimately making picks there. So I'm going to start off with Offensive Rookie of the Year. Now I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I think it's going to be Caleb Williams. He is the favorite right now, according to DraftKings, plus 135. And I think that this is a little bit of a boring pick, but I think it's the right pick. And as long as he is fully healthy, he has he's in just about the best possible situation relative to his other peers that were drafted at the top of the first round as well. This... If there's any other quarterbacks in contention, that's where the award usually ends up as opposed to going to a running back and a wide receiver. I think that Caleb is going to have the best season out of all of the rookie quarterbacks. You look across the board here, there were six drafted in the first round, but J.J. McCarthy is out for the season. Drake May isn't expected to start for some time. Michael Penix isn't expected to be seen at all, so you can already somewhat eliminate them. And then it feels like the race is really between Caleb, Jaden Daniels, and Bo Nix. Maybe you have a little bit of love for Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors, which is fair. But that being said, I think that Caleb Williams is far and away in the best position to succeed in year one. We talked about this in the past. I think over the past decade plus that this is the best situation that a first overall quarterback has walked into, at least since I have started walk- watching football. The last time I think there was anything even you know near as comparable was maybe Cam Newton when he first came in with the Panthers. Maybe you want to make an argument for Kyler Murray in 2019 with the Cardinals, but ultimately I think with Kay- for Caleb Williams coming in with DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze, a good running back room and a solid offensive line, that's everything you can really ask for. And if the Bears are winning games too, he's going to get that extra amount of media love that I like Daniels, but there's a lot more uncertainty with I mean, they just traded away what was supposed to be their number two wide receiver a few weeks ago in Jahan Dotson. I'm still a little bit uncertain about Cliff Kingsbury and whether or not he can be a play caller at the NFL level. We'll see. Ultimately, you know, I don't want to overreact or anything to preseason and I think that he was in over his head for sure when he was hired as the the head coach of the Cardinals. We'll see what this second stint looks like for him, but I don't know about that. I think that Bo Nix at plus 1,000 is actually decent odds there. Um, I I just don't love the skill position players that are surrounding him. It would take a lot for him to overtake Caleb Williams if he produces and the Broncos overachieve a little bit and Caleb doesn't live up to expectation, the doors could be open, but that's just a lot of things to sort of break right for him. But that being said, I think that Sean Payton can put him in a good position moving forward here. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Top three candidates based off of odds, Liatu Latu of the Colts, Dallas Turner of the Vikings, Jared Verse of the Rams. I'm a big fan of all three of them. And I will throw Terion Arnold, cornerback for the Detroit Lions, in the mix as well. He's fifth in odds at plus 1,200 that I think could be pretty good value there, considering the fact that the Lions, their secondary, has been their biggest weakness over the past couple seasons. And if he steps in and has an immediate impact, the media love could sort of pick him up there. But ultimately, I don't feel super strongly about this. I I like Liatu Latu a lot, but to steer away from going with the number one favorite in this, I'm going to go with Dallas Turner. And I think that he is due for a very big rookie season, considering the fact that he's playing in a Brian Flores defense that loves to blitz, that just invested into a number of different edge rushers in Jonathan Grenard and Andrew Van Ginkle. And I think that there's a very good chance that we could see Dallas Turner be able to sort of clean up plays here and rack up a good amount of sacks as well that statistically could put him above some of these others. 
Uh, the one thing I would be concerned about is I don't know if he's going to get as many sacks as Liatu Latu. So if Latu is fully healthy, you know, I think that that is an excellent pick and I would not argue against it. There is a little bit of a risk in the health bet of Latu considering his injury history, but ultimately I think that this is going to be a very good defensive rookie of the year race. Um, obviously, we didn't see any defensive players taken for the first 14 picks, I believe it was, of the 2024 draft. So it's not like there are any sky-high expectations or any players that are expected to you know, light the world on fire, light the NFL on fire in year one. But I think that Dallas Turner can definitely rack up some counting stats for sure in the sack department. Offensive player of the year, top three in odds. Tyreek Hill, Christian McCaffrey, and C.D. Lamb. I do like C.D. Lamb a lot, considering that he is far and away the best playmaker on that offensive side of the ball for the Cowboys. That He is going to get a ton of looks this upcoming season, and I think he is going to... I mean, last year, you saw the stats that he put up. I think he's going to put up similar production this upcoming season. That being said... I'm going to go with Jamar Chase, and I'm a little bit nervous about it because of the fact that Chase is currently holding out. Now, he did return to practice yesterday. We'll see whether or not he does play this upcoming weekend against the Patriots, but, you know, the last time we saw him and Burrow both healthy was Chase's rookie season in 2021. He put up over 1,400 yards and caught 13 touchdowns in that rookie year. Ultimately, again, if they're both available, I feel really good about what we could see from Jamar Chase. It's hard taking him over CeeDee Lamb, where I know Lamb is going to get also an extensive amount of targets, but I'm I'm going a little bit on a on a limb here with the longer odds in in Jamar Chase, but CeeDee Lamb is also a very good bet as well. But now moving on to Defensive Player of the Year. This is a tough one because ultimately I think it comes down to two people and they're both tied for number one in odds according to DraftKings. So I'm not really going out on much of a limb here. It's between TJ Watt and Micah Parsons in my opinion. Now I love me some Max Crosby as well. He's third at plus 700, but Watt and Parsons, I think it's going to come down to the two of them. And I think that a little bit based off of previous events, I mean, TJ Watt has won a Defensive Player of the Year award. A lot of debates as to whether or not he should have one or two extra in there. And we're going to have a situation this year as well where we could be looking at TJ Watt versus somebody who has never won a Defensive Player of the Year award before. And that could be, you know, something that sort of skews away from Watt, but Ultimately, I think that I'm picking TJ Watt. You just the the impact that he has when he is on the field for the Steelers is felt maybe more than any other defensive player in the NFL. At least, you know, wins are not a an individual stat, let alone a defensive end slash linebacker stat. But I mean, the Steelers are just so much better when TJ Watt is on the field. And ultimately, I think the fact that he has been sort of uh, turned away these past couple years could ultimately mean that he is due for a Defensive Player of the Year award. And then finally, MVP, when we're looking at the top odds for this upcoming season, Patrick Mahomes, the significant favorite at plus 475, followed up by CJ Stroud and Josh Allen. Joe Burrow, I think, also has a great chance to take this home, but my pick is Jalen Hurts, and I don't feel great about it necessarily, but I think that the Eagles are going to have a lot of success this upcoming season. I know all of the drama that's gone on behind the scenes there in Philadelphia, but I think that this is going to be the year that Nick Sirianni, almost coaching for his job to some degree at least, knows that he has to sort of fully turn over the offense to Jalen Hurts to let Hurts evolve the offense the way that he was hoping to last season now with Kellen Moore 
I think that the Eagles are going to be at the top of the NFL for best record in the league. I think that that's probably not a bad bet in itself. And Hertz is going to have, you know, last year he was dealing with injuries as well, specifically that knee injury. I think he's going to be in a better position this year. I think he has the weapons, and ultimately I have him winning the MVP. His odds there are plus 1,200. Another long shot that I do actually really like is Jared Goff at plus 2,000, and Jared Goff MVP just does not sound right. But that being said, I believe it's something like 13 or 14 out of the 17 games for the Lions this year are in a dome. Jared Goff His numbers are significantly better when playing in a dome. And the Lions are going to have a good regular season. Now, again, it's not my pick necessarily. I don't know if he's going to have the stats like that to rival some of the other best in the NFL. And I also, even if he does, I don't know if he's necessarily going to get that level of respect from the voters. But I think it's a sneaky long shot bet as well at plus 2,000. But... Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section, what your predictions for this upcoming season are. Again, it's it's pretty hard to pick these things preseason, but I uh, wanted to have a little bit of fun with it, not go full chalk all the way across. But uh, again, let me know what your thoughts are as we are going to head into our final segment. And when we come back on the other side, we are going to be discussing some big picture NFL questions that we could get a little bit more of an answer from with this weekend of football. So we will be diving into that. But first, a quick break. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back.